just before my 12th birthday, I was diagnosed with the incurable bowel disease known as Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease can affect from your mouth to your backside. And I was diagnosed right at the join between the small bowel and the, the large bowel. And then at 14, I had my first surgery. If you imagine your intestine as a hose pipe, it's, it's several meters long and they cut out the section that's no good and stick the two hose pipes together. I had 25 further surgeries. My bowel ended up at 40 centimeters. It just been chopped away, diseased, diseased. And I reached the point of intestinal failure. Your body can't absorb uh, what you put into it. They said to me, look, your bowel isn't gonna recover. You're gonna need a bowel transplant. And one of the big things I knew from my transplant was that I was gonna have a, an ostomy. Uh, I was gonna have a bag attached to my body. And one of my earliest recollections is waking up feeling this bag, this alien thing attached to my body. And I got used to the bag, but having a bag is a challenge because what they do as part of surgery is they cut your nerve endings. Here, you've got a hole effectively halfway through your intestine. Your waste is collected into a bag and you don't know when, what, when it's gonna come out. So it fills very quickly. So you experience leaks and spills and those things are challenging. And not only that, your doctors wanna know how much is coming out. So you're basically asked to measure your own shit. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. What do you do to cope? And they're like, just get used to it. And so I was looking at this bag and going, okay, well, every time there's output, it, it expands, it changes shape. Surely if I could know when it's gonna change shape, I could send a signal, I could happily figure it out. And I had some help with some friends, because I'm not an engineer, and we bought some gear on eBay and hacked a sensor. I would sellotape it onto my bag and, and walk at home and then take it into the hospital and go, look, my bag's beeping. And my doctors were like, that's great for you, but it doesn't help me. We still need to know how much shit is coming out. And when it's coming out, you've got to be able to figure it out. What struck me at the time was people building all these solutions in healthcare. They're giving you all these things, whether it be drugs, whether it be technologies, whether it be bandages, whatever it may be but they're giving it to you rather than building it with you. And here I am as the end user. I understand the problem better than anyone else, better than any nurse. If I want to know how to solve a problem, I'll go to another patient. So I started building uh, Eleven Health just as a way of helping other people, hacking our health. I used social media. I'd really got going on social media in the build-up to transplant and the phone calls and the texts, as, as beautiful as they are, are endless. And I just started a blog. And the blog was really a way of saying, this is what's going on, and I was really transparent. And what I didn't realize is that my healthcare team were reading the blog as well. And then they were passing it on to medical students. And at some point, you know, 100,000 people were reading this blog from around the world, just going, this is what it's like to experience a transplant. And I have a WhatsApp group with my surgeon in, who's now in India, the surgeon that took over in the UK, nurse, and we speak almost daily. And they are part of my life. And they're like my second family. We had, we had two guilty pleasures for going through transplant. One, um, Jeremy Kyle, I'm not sure it's a guilty pleasure, and Strictly Come Dancing, which is again, the UK version of Dancing with Stars and it's always every day different blood tests, different blood tests, and nurses would always time it around Jeremy Kyle so we could watch another story live on TV um, because it kind of took you out of your experience. And then at the time when I was in hospital, there was a, quite a cool guy who was hoping to win Strictly Come Dancing and all the nurses would come in and go, I've got to see this guy dance, I've got to see him. And I think what's important is that you treat them with the same respect you want back. My surgeon said to me a phrase that is, is very well used, you know, yesterday's gone and tomorrow hasn't happened to so live today. And just, you know, you've now had the gift of another life, go live it. And I'm very lucky we built this relationship, um, really just based on the trust, empathy together. And, and fundamentally, I think that's at the heart of healthcare. That doctor-patient, healthcare professional-patient relationship for me is, is what underpins. You can have all the best technology in the world, you can have all the best systems in the world, but it's that human-to-human -human connection that for me is most powerful. <laughs>